Hey everyone, today's video is going to be all about the stock plugin RetroSynth within Logic Pro. We're going to be talking about the analog portion of the plugin today, uh, but we're also going to talk about how a lot of these basic synthesis parameters are going to carry over to the other parts of the plugin, and you're going to walk away with a really good understanding of how to use these uh, in other plugins as well, in and outside of Logic. I highly recommend this program for someone who's just getting into synth instruments. Uh, because the analog portion of this plugin especially uh, is very user friendly. The components are very basic. There aren't a lot of layers that you're working with. So this is a really good program for someone to really start understanding the choices that they make when setting these synth parameters uh, so they can make really informed decisions. And that is going to be a big part of today's video as well. We're going to be talking not only about what these things mean, but also what things to consider when you're going to apply them. So I have RetroSynth open here, uh, and I have a little harmony background and a melody background that we're going to be messing with today. Uh, so I just wanted to play you the harmony background that I've written, and I'm just going to play it at the default settings of RetroSynth, and we're going to see how it sounds. Alright, so that should be a very familiar sound to a lot of you. It's just a very pure electronic signal, uh, not a lot of characteristics that are making it unique. If you want to start with something a little more interesting that has a, maybe a different tone, you can actually come up here to this drop down menu at the top of the plugin uh, and go down here to where you see all of these categories of synths broken down. Uh, so you have synth leads. That's going to be something that's supposed to be melodic, okay, that's meant to really not have more than one note playing at a time, so it's meant to cut through the mix. You have pads, and pads are kind of meant to sit in the background of a mix. It's more um, reserved for harmony, and that harmony can be dark or bright, uh, but it is something that's just meant to kind of provide atmosphere and effect. All right, and some of these like synth bass, strings, keyboards, and brass are just meant to emulate their real life counterparts. All right, so like a bass guitar, strings like cello and violin, etc. These bottom two categories, sequence elements and warp synth, would have a lot more to do with creating a soundscape or special effects than they would uh, creating something like a piece of music. Today we're gonna start from scratch though, because I really want you to get a good foundational understanding uh, of how to begin sculpting these sounds and also making informed decisions to get to the sound that you want. Because uh, you don't want to just be fiddling with these and 50% of the time you end up with something that sounds good. You want to actually know where you're going and how to get there. The first place to start here is going to be our oscillator section of the plugin. Okay, so that's denoted here, oscillator. Uh, and we're going to be working in the analog portion of the oscillator. Okay, so this is just uh, one type of oscillator you can use in the plugin, and it's the one we're going to cover today. An analog oscillator can generate one or more waveforms, uh, each at a given frequency and shape. The analog oscillator gives us three waveforms to work from. Okay, we're going to start with the waveform that has the fewest number of overtones, and then we're going to work up to the most overtone rich waveform. Starting with the fewest, we have the triangle wave. And you can see that down here at the bottom of the shape two knob. Okay, so I'm actually gonna just play you uh, my harmony section here with the triangle wave only. And you're gonna notice that it sounds very hollow and lacking in richness. Next up, we have the square wave. Okay, so that's the next step up in terms of the amount of harmonic content. Uh, so we're starting to take up more room at this point, but it still does sound quite thin. You can see that the square wave is both on the shape 1 oscillator and the shape 2 oscillator here at the top. The interesting thing about the square wave in this plugin is that it operates on a slider for both shape 1 and 2 uh, from a perfectly symmetrical square wave to a reduced pulse width square wave. Okay, so you notice this shape down here, uh, that pulse at the very beginning of the wave is shorter. Okay, now you might be wondering what effect is that gonna have? Well, it's actually gonna start to thin out that signal. So if we work up from 50%, which is a perfectly symmetrical square wave, 
all the way down to 0%, you're going to see that thin out to almost nothingness. All right, now the final shape that we have is a sawtooth wave. And you can see that in the middle of both of these shape knobs. It kind of looks like a downward ramp. This is the most harmonically rich waveform. So this is going to take up a lot more room in the mix, uh, but it also is going to have a more full sound. You might also notice that we have this more erratic waveform down here at the bottom of the shape one knob. That is actually just a noise waveform. So if you open up your EQ and you play that noise shape all on its own, you're actually going to see a pretty even distribution of all frequencies uh, across the EQ. That might sound relatively hard to listen to as it is, uh, but these noise shapes are actually really great ways to create percussive sounds like a bass kick drum or a snare drum. Okay, if you're going to be programming drums in RetroSynth, that's a great way to do it. It's just that later on we would shorten the duration of that sound uh, so that it would end abruptly and actually create the percussive sound we're looking for. In order to assess which waveform you might want to start your synth with, you might want to ask yourself how it's being used. Do you want this to sit in the backdrop of the song to fill space? If so, you might want something more harmonically rich that you can have at a lower volume and maybe deeper in the reverb so that it is filling a wide variety of frequencies, but it's not really piercing through the mix uh, and taking attention away from something else that is at the forefront. That's something that, for instance, the sawtooth wave would be very good for, as it contains a lot of harmonic content. If you're wanting something for a lead synth that you actually do want at the forefront of your mix, you might consider choosing something that's a little thinner and less harmonically rich. That's something that the square wave, especially a square wave with reduced pulse width, would have a very easy job of doing if you're trying to get it up front uh, and cutting through the rest of your mix. The next decision you have to make is if you want to mix two of these waveforms together. Okay, you can just have uh, one or the other, but you can also mix them at various degrees. If you come over here to the mix slider, you can see that there is a value between oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. Okay, now as you get closer to zero, you have uh, more of oscillator one in your mix. So zero is purely just the shape that you've made for oscillator one. And then if you come over here to one, we have purely oscillator two. Okay, so as we bring that closer to 50% or 0.5, you're gonna see these two shapes blend. So let's take a square wave on top and we'll just do a perfectly symmetrical one because this is a harmony and we'll do a sawtooth wave on the bottom. So that's giving us some of that harmonic richness that we want with the harmony. Here's the 50% blend. So at this point, it kind of seems like we've formed into just one larger waveform. But the interesting thing about the analog synth is that we can treat these independently and begin to kind of separate them to give a widening effect uh, something that can take up more space uh, and have a more interesting texture. In order to start separating these sounds out, you would want to go down here to the bottom of the oscillator, the semitones and synths setting. Okay, so just a small overview for those of you unfamiliar with these two concepts. Semitone is basically the equivalent of the next note on a keyboard. Okay, so C to C sharp would be one semitone away. And so there are 12 semitones in an octave, meaning that uh, if you go from a C to 12 semitones up, you're at another C, just higher. The semitone knob is going to affect the pitch of your shape 2 oscillator only. Okay, so let's say we want a very low and full harmony. Maybe we want to bring this shape 2 down an octave. Okay, we can actually go down two octaves in this, but let's just go down one. And we're going to hear how now these sounds are going to sound a bit more separated because now we have octaves stacked on top of one another.
That was a great first step in separating these two waveforms, uh, but we can go even further by using the sense knob right next to the semitone knob. If you're unfamiliar with sense, there are 100 cents within a semitone. Okay, so you're not actually changing the note completely uh, when you alter the sense value, but you are kind of fine tuning it, okay? Bringing it slightly sharp or slightly flat. And that can do something very important for separating these two waveforms. Because if you have one of these waveforms slightly off pitch, uh, it's going to emulate uh, something in a real performance environment uh, where multiple instruments are playing, but those instruments are never actually going to be completely matching in their tuning. Okay, they're going to be slightly off, probably by a certain value of sense. So if you use this knob, let's say to raise the scent value of shape 2 by 8 cents, you're going to hear that slight difference in pitch, and it's going to differentiate those waveforms just a tiny bit more, uh, make it feel like there's more playing at once. Just to hear a more dramatic effect though, let's kind of raise that up the full 50, down the full 50 uh, while we listen to the harmony. All right, so that's the last thing you want to do with the oscillator portion of your plugin. Okay, we will eventually come back to shape modulation and vibrato. Uh, but before then, we want to move on to the next section of the plugin, which is the filter.